ton of horses out here, ton of colour out here. Extremely gorgeous and I was going to say this is the country way, we're getting the arena ready. The horses graze it down um, for our clinic. The horses are coming in over here, they're not just salt but also the water and people are beginning to come together. Over here I wanted you guys to meet a special person, this is Frank. Good Frank morning. Kunz. Good morning. Good morning. And he has something to say to everybody. Well, I'd have a lot to say, but I'm not going <laughs> to take up a lot of time. I'm just, you know, uh, I'm so pleased that Ann is here. And, and uh, these horses, they're a very special type of horse. And, um, and we've got a really wonderful crowd here. And there's not many places in the world you can come out and do something like this, be around this many horses and observe the mare bunches and watch the interaction with the stallions and the bachelor bands or mare bands also. So maybe next year uh, we can all be here. So good morning and thank you, Anna. Yeah, and I wanted him to speak to in a moment, uh, some of the horses here, there's extreme color and he could speak all day about the Nakoda horses and keeping that lineage alive. But let me see, if Frank, you could say a few sentences because I know you could speak all day. <laughs> what would you say about your horses? Why are they, why are they different? Um, a number of things make them different. Confirmation, number one. Uh, and our family, we got into these horses by accident. You know, it was nothing we set out to do. So, uh, you know, um, when we got them, uh, my family, we, we competed in a race called the Great American Horse Race. We had a circuit in southwest uh, Minnesota, quite a few races in South Dakota, a number of races here in North Dakota. And we were running quarter horse thoroughbred types like everybody else was. But when they got that eight, nine years of age, they were breaking down. Hmm. And Leo spent a lot of time out in the Theodore Roosevelt National Park and watching the wild horses. And you know, he just originally picks them up for the bone and the hoof. And that was the same time frame that the National Park was in the process of eliminating the, the native type uh -huh. stallions. And so uh, we ended up buying them because A, we knew they were different. We didn't know why at the time. But like I said, we picked them up for a better hoof and a bone, but after we were around them and start working with them, it was the this mind. that yeah. um, sold us. I mean, they're, they're some of the smartest, most compassionate horses I've ever been around in my life. That's incredible. I was fortunate to work with Leo a few years ago yes. doing it. Now there were 12, 12 siblings, right? Or 12, 12 all siblings. in. So it's a whole family of 12. How many went into horses? All of us, and as oh, kids. I mean, there we, you go. We, we, all of us rode. You know, I mean, that's how we got around. And like I said, my father loved to go to the weekend horse shows. I mean, you have one in every little town every weekend, and he loved to win. That's so awesome. he, he bred a fast little pony line. I, I've got a few of that pony line left too uh, in this herd because it's 60 some years of my father's breeding and my brother and so I wasn't about to give that up either. I wanted to show that. Thank you so much. I wanted to show that. There's some ponies in here yeah, that, and go See ahead. a little uh, reddish roan? Yeah. The left or the yeah. right shoulder brand there. She's a pony cross. And then there's uh, three other ones over, over there, there in that corner. So I look forward to showing you guys more throughout the week. We've got people coming from all over the United States for this event. And it's an event and an experience because there's an awful lot of gatherings and coming together and socializing as well as watching the horses. So stay tuned. When we can, we'll be live streaming for you guys. Have a great day.